Well, hello there. We're here to talk about HGH. What does that stand for? Mm, human growth hormone, right? And some of you possibly heard about HGH in connection with abuse by some athletes. Not a good thing. But all of us need a certain amount, and our bodies normally produce it. And uh, some people unfortunately cannot. Why would they not be able to produce HGH? Because of what we talked about in the last unit, they inherited through no fault of their own. They inherited a mutation they, to a gene. Uh, the gene that uh, codes for HGH is defective, and so they cannot produce it normally. What is the result if a person cannot produce HGH normally? Well, they're unless they can get some supplements, they're much smaller than the uh, than the normal, much smaller than normal. An unfortunate thing. And so. Um, where is HGH produced? What does it say in your book? It's produced where? In the pituitary gland? Pituitary gland. Yes, it is. And uh, where is uh, where is our pituitary gland? Anybody know? Well, I bet you can't tell me very easily, can you? But yeah, it's most some of you know it's inside the head. It's deep inside. It's not part of the brain, but it's uh, kind of attached to a uh, uh, part of the brain down in the middle and it's about the size of a pea, a little tiny thing. And uh, so, pituitary gland uh, produces uh, HGH, our circulatory system distributes around the, our bodies, and that promotes normal growth, normally. So, but, now we're going to consider uh, folks and how folks would get HGH uh, that need it as a supplement. Well, let's talk about before biotech and with biotech. And so, how was HGH obtained for those who needed it before biotech? What does your book say? It was obtained from what deceased individuals. Yes. And so, problems with that. Uh, I'm not going to write all these on here, but uh, uh, you know, you should have those in your notes. You should have looked up the answers. But yeah, it was obtained from deceased individuals. And that produced uh, some problems. Uh, first of all, uh, again, the pituitary gland is the size of a pea. How much HGH can you get from one deceased individual's pituitary gland? Very, very small amount. So the quantity available was down, was was low. It was low. And of course, uh, when something is needed and there's a demand for it and the quantity is low, what does that do to the cost? The cost is prohibitively high. And uh, then what about safety? Well it turns out that people in some cases react to other people's HGH and uh, that's not good. And so there's a problem here. There's a problem with uh, safety. Uh, there's a problem with reactions uh, to other people's HGH. So, not a good thing, but that's the best that can be done for a long time. What about with biotech? How is it obtained? Not from people's pituitary glands. What are we talking about right here? Well, this is what the whole unit's about, but as a preview of coming attractions, it's simply this. Bacteria cells are tricked, somehow tricked, into producing human HGH. Let me say that again. Bacteria cells with biotech uh, techniques, bacteria cells are somehow tricked into producing human HGH. Same thing for insulin and some other things. Bacteria cells are somehow tricked into producing the human product. Pretty neat deal. And uh, by the way, do bacteria cells punch a time clock? Are they willing to work on weekends? Do they charge for overtime? None of the above. Uh, well, maybe they do work on weekends. Oh, well. Anyway, um, yeah, and they can just work away. All you have to do uh, is treat them right. You know, you have to give them room to live, a nice temperature, which is for the bacteria that are used, that's basically our body temperature, and, and food to eat. You know, food, temperature, room. Hey, they'll go, they'll, they'll go crazy. They'll just, you know, they'll multiply like crazy, and then they will somehow, based on uh, what we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, they will produce human HGH in large quantities. So, uh, using bacteria then, uh, what have we done? 
not me, but the people doing it, uh, what have those, those smart folks done? They have greatly increased the quantity available when the quantity to, um, when the, uh, uh, the quantity, of it, quantity available goes up, what does the cost do? It goes down. Now it's a whole lot less expensive. And uh, through insurance and whatnot, folks that need it can afford it. And finally, the safety issues, uh, they were totally resolved. And uh, because when you're, using, when you're using bacteria, you can specify every A, T, G, and C very precisely. You can get exactly the product you want. No guessing. You can get exactly what you need. So, without biotech, with biotech, uh, big difference? Yes. Is this controversial? I don't think so. I don't happen to need any of these products, for which I am thankful, but I am very thankful that those who do need them can now get them at, uh, with the safety issues resolved, at a relatively low price, and uh, can uh, uh, help with their situation that they inherited through you know, no fault of their own. So, what is this? I think it's kind of like a win-win situation, is it not? Yes, it is. So, how do, we, how do scientists trick bacteria into uh, producing a needed human protein? That's coming up. First, we're going to learn about a couple tools that biotech folks use, and then we'll learn about the technique itself. All right, that's it for this one.